Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me, and welcome back to the new series of XCOM Iron Man Impossible. A new series of learning, emotion, and not explaining why I always pick Asia. But fear not, because this time I will explain just later. Because right now it's time to jump straight in to our first operation. The aliens have invaded, and first contact has been made at a truck stop in Melbourne, Australia. Enter Operation Broken Sentinel, as we join XCOM Asia's first responders already being deployed to the field. Now I don't name these troops, uh, just like last season I have a name file that randomly picks members out of my group of uh, Shack Tactical uh, to fight the alien menace. So without further ado, let's see who's answered the call. As we touch down in the AO we have Gentleman Otter, Medalock, Curtis and Ghost Dad Recon. Now considering the relative success of our troops last time, we can only hope that our new squad will perform with as much skill and courage. But it all depends on how I lead them. So let's get to work. Now as we remember from Series 1, Impossible XCOM is all about the use of hardcover and careful concealment. Now the good news is that the trucks all around us provide both. The long, fully covered trailers are going to give us a great way to move without some aliens spotting us. Remember that running into the enemy unprepared is one of the fastest ways to get in over your head. In Iron Man Impossible, it's crucial that you move cautiously, slowly but steadily, and make contact on your terms. Gaps in our cover, like the one between the trailer and the truck cab, could get us spotted if there's any aliens on the other side. So we stay away from it until everyone's ready for action. With the squad prepared, Kurt checks. And sure enough, there's three little truckers sharing road stories around the corner. The cover they take is very good against Kurt's position, but because the rest of the squad is ready, we can exploit the situation. Ghost Dad has a beautiful flank on two of them, and while Metalock's position is lacking, Otter gets a flank on the last one. Alright, that's a good way to start the series. But there's still one left in good cover, and if he charges Ghost Dad, he's close enough to do some damage. To stop this, Kurt and Mita go into Overwatch. But after watching both his friends die, the last sectoid just freezes up. With the shot still a flank, Ghost Dad finishes the job. Welcome to Earth, sucker! Got him. The X-Rays never knew what hit him. With three shots, three kills, and not a scratch on us, it's a good first engagement. In fact, it's a little too good. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of getting a little bit suspicious. I mean, I know what to do when things go bad, but when things go good, I get kind of confused. But once I get a hold of myself, it's time to get moving. There's still a bunch more baddies out there, and our movement remains the same. Slow but steady bounds that avoid any nasty surprises. And the best way to avoid surprises is to follow a leader. Have one member of your squad lead the way, and have the rest follow in his exact footsteps. In this way, if your leader makes contact, the rest of the squad is ready to back him up. And if he doesn't, you know the trail he's blazed is safe to follow. But remember, if you drift from his footsteps by even a tile, all bets are off. Hostile spotted. With three new enemies scurrying off into the fog, this time it's going to be a fight. When aliens are running every which way, it's easy to lose track of how many you're facing. And if you do, it's much harder to make smart decisions. So throughout a mission, use something to keep a running tally. Because I'm a G, I got a bunch of spare change in my desk, so I use coins as tokens. Now with contact made, we want to push into cover before the aliens start shooting. Mida and Ghost Dad get their heads down at the van, and Otter starts moving for the flank. A little hidden movement later, and we've got a sneaky little sectoid who's trying to take the same flank as Otter. But first, Ghost Dad takes a peek and whoop! Yes, today at the truck stop, when it rains, it pours. With two more on the board, it's a five on four, and their cover is excellent. We're outnumbered, outgunned, and there's no real cover around us that we can use to advance. In a situation like this, where no real options present themselves, sometimes it's worth just holding steady and waiting for the enemy to present an opportunity. Otter pulls back from the charging flanker, and with the rest of the squad hunkered down, the ability's double defense bonus should keep them safe. Over here. Over here. 
At first, things might not seem any better, but on the left flank, we've got the opportunity we need. We can't quite reach the aliens with our grenade, but we don't need to. They probably don't have gas pumps in space, but Ghost Dad shows our visitors exactly why you don't use them as cover. And with the exploding sectoid being a mine melder, we also kill the guy he was merging with. That allows Otta to push up, and with the hope of destroying some cover, she joins in the Frag Olympics. Eat this. Well, his cover's still standing, but hey, he's probably not too happy, and that's good enough for me. And speaking of unhappy aliens back on the left, Kurt speeds up our impromptu car bomb. With the enemy in good cover, Meta goes on Overwatch to at least keep him from running. But this sectoid is made of sterner stuff. With Ghost Dad bleeding out on the ground and no medkits to stabilize him, we shift from patient tactics to racing the clock. He's only got three turns before he dies from blood loss, so Otta kicks things off with the flank she's been waiting for. See you in hell. Now because we've been counting, we know there's just one enemy left. And judging by the mind meld on the guy we just killed, we've got a pretty good idea he's back at the pumps. With just one enemy left and the clock ticking, it's time to make some decisive moves. Dashing into hard cover like this is a risk, but to save Ghost Dad, it's a risk we'll take. As you'd expect, the sectoid who's lived the longest is rather cunning. Overwatch is the perfect counter to the bold charge that we're trying to pull on him. If we try to move to flank him now, he's likely going to gun us down. But waiting while Ghost Dad dies isn't an option. And it's time for another risk. The Sectoid only gets one Overwatch shot. If we can waste it, we can flank him. And that's where Otter comes in. Drawing fire like this is risky. But if she dashes, she's significantly less likely to be hit. And with her buddy's lives on the line, she dashes hard. And it's a miss. And with the Overwatch burned, Kurt and Meta can go for the kill. Suck on this. Fire the so ends Operation Broken Sentinel. Uh, you, you know what? That taxi's on fire, actually. Let's just get out of here. But yes, the operation was a success, and Australia's truckers are safe to roam free once more. And apart from Ghost Dad's nap, things couldn't have gone better. With every squad member promoted, our options just improved drastically. Kurt's shotgun and charging ability will give us great offense, while Meta's sniper rifle will deal excellent damage at range, if he can hit anything. Otter follows in the footsteps of Soylent with a machine gun and rocket launcher, and when Ghost Dad gets out of sickbay, his smoke grenade will provide us with some excellent cover. With promotions handled, it's time to set up the base. In research, this time, we've got a one-track mind. Our goal is to go straight for laser rifles, and picking weapon fragments is the start on our path to hot, lasery death. In engineering, we get a med kit for next time someone needs a band-aid, and we start our satellite production. In case you knew or you forgot, the panic reduction and money generation of satellites that you launch makes them the most important thing to build. So start immediately, and don't stop making them till the Earth's orbit looks like a parking lot. There's no rest for the wicked or the Wicked Handsome. And it's only a day till E.T.'s back for more. Commander, we if we were going on names alone, I'd probably save Chihuahua. But the rewards are what drive my choice here. And the importance of building satellites and new equipment makes engineers the choice I'm gonna take. So it's off to India for our next caper. Dropship has arrived. Huh, it's a graveyard. That's, uh, that's probably not good. With the payback for Series 1 just heating up, join me tomorrow for Operation Vengeful Flame. But before we go tonight, there's actually one more thing to take care of. Over the weekend, you guys have sent in a ton of great emails, and now it's time to announce our prize winners for the Green Man Gaming giveaway. I've really enjoyed reading your emails, and I wish you could all be winners, but the raffle gods have spoken. The winners are... Chris Chambers, Geordie Wills, and Chris Brunges. 
Brunges. Br Brunges. Congratulations, guys. All three of you have won your very own copy of Style Savvy Trendsetters for the Nintendo 3DS. And wait, hang on. No, that's the script for my other show. Uh, what I meant to say is, thanks to GreenManGaming.com, you've each won a copy of XCOM Enemy Unknown. Check your email for instructions on getting your prizes, and good luck on saving the world. And on that bombshell, we're done for the night. Thanks for watching, and of any luck, I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, have a good one.